morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Mrs. Koichi. It's Wilson. This is Echo. I'm happy to see this coming as present. SLC and SNC members, our esteemed parents, teachers, and staff. And to our celebrities of the day, the class of 2021, a resounding applause. I want your energy. And the former Fondal Panel, well done and congratulations. I'm so, so, so proud of you. I can imagine the joy and thrill each of you must be feeling as you graduate from secondary school today. It has been a journey getting to this point, and I rejoice with you, your parents and teachers on this momentous occasion. I am so proud of your commitment, your doggedness and focus. You are celebrated today for the grace and humility you have shown despite a most unusual year. I thank God with you for seeing you this far, and I pray that he will continue to guard and guide you as you trust him along the way. Boys and girls, or should I say ladies and gentlemen, you have come to an important point in your life's journey. Even as you age closer to the golden age of adulthood, before you know now, you are going to be 18 years old and under the laws of the land, you are adults. So you are getting closer and closer. It is important that you do not lose sight of your goals and values. They are the bedrock upon which you will build or continue to build your future. At this critical time, when our country is in dire need of change agents, you must not lose sight of the role you can play to make a difference. I know several of you have your eyes on continuing your studies in different countries of the world. I would urge you to see those countries as principles that will help form you into young or into solid young men and women who will contribute to their own quota to the development of our country. You must always remember that you are stakeholders in this project called Nigeria. And no outsider will build Nigeria except our beloved citizens. And this critical mass includes you and you. So I urge you to show a commitment to Nigeria's development and resolve to be change makers. As future change agents, what should preoccupy your hearts over the next few years? I will ask you to maintain a sense of self-discipline and remain open-minded, deploying your learning in a wide variety of situations and environments. Develop and hold an appreciation for Nigeria and indeed Africa's role in the world. The education you have received at this point school is holistic and has developed you into confident and responsible young people with the capacity to face the dynamics of the fast changing world we live in. You have been exposed to the critical values of integrity, respect, and service among others. You have learned to think in a caring way towards other people, always conscious of the fact that the privilege you have comes with enormous responsibility. I encourage you to remain lifelong learners. You are fully prepared for the best that the world has got to offer. As I begin to round off, I would like to urge you, class of 2021, to ensure that the skills and knowledge you are gained will, uh, you will continue to acquire and master are strongly connected to the attitudes and virtues you have learned over the years, both at home and here at school. Practice hard work. Show integrity in your dealings. Be empathetic towards others. Respect and treat other people with dignity. Persevere in all you do. Don't lose your growth mindset. Love, serve others. Show humility. 
privacy, creativity, safety, God. None of these ever become old school. They are evergreen and will serve as very favorite guideposts along the way. A big thank you to all our parents here today. Graduating class, may I ask that you put your hands together for your parents? They are doing so, so well. You are not doing it right now. And I say thank you very much. And I say a big congratulations to all parents and guardians present here today. I rejoice with you on this important occasion. Thank you for your partnership with Green Springs School over the years. I also want to thank our amazing teachers, non-academic staff, external coaches and collaborators who encourage and support our students on a daily basis. Well done for the immense support you provided to this class we are celebrating today. So, ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2021, may I ask that you put your hands together for all the staff who have supported you over your years at Green Springs School. Yes, we can do better than that. Thank you. I want to be Energy. Thank you very much. Class of 2021, I wish all of you a impactful, purposeful, happy, and God centered lives. Ensure to stay in touch with Green Spring School. We look forward to celebrating your future achievements and successes. A lot has been invested in you. And I know you are unstoppable. So I charge you to go and live a life of impact. I know we will hear great things about you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Congratulations, super class of 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 2021 valedictorian or like you know, a role on the front of the stage. <laughs> Five years of secondary school, every class every presentation, every test, every exam, they've all boiled down to this moment. And alas, here we are. Good morning, Mrs. Koiki, Dr. Wilson, Mrs. Ekong, Mrs. Ojugo, members of the senior management team, our esteemed, our esteemed parents, teachers, and guests, students, and wonderful graduates. My name is Ade Jumoke Awolano, and I am overjoyed to welcome you all to the 2020-2021 graduation ceremony. Wow, where do I start from? It's no secret that we've all been anticipating this day, and we have indeed worked hard to get here. However, we cannot take sole credit for our success stories. Much of the work was done by our wonderful, more than able teachers. I would like to immensely thank them and all other members of staff that, are, that have helped us along this journey. And of course, I would like to thank our loving and steady parents who continue to provide us with endless amounts of support. The people we ran to when we felt the whole world was on our shoulders. Their words of encouragement spurred us on, pushing us to never give up. And most of all, we give thanks to God who sustained us in good health and granted us wisdom and grace. As I looked back and reflected on my secondary school experience, I happened to realize something and it was, life is really only moments. The moment you won that competition, the moment you stayed up all night completing that project, the moment you carpooled with your friends to that party. You may remember these moments, you may not, but what you will remember are the people you spent them with and how you felt. I have learned to appreciate 
cherish and hold tight to every single moment. And I am extremely grateful for all the memories and moments we as a graduating set shared. And now to my fellow classmates, as at this moment, we stand on the brink of infinite possibilities. How can we not be envied? No, not for what we have or have done, but for what we will still do and how high we will still go. We have been given a world-class education, equipping us for everything that comes after this. However, graduating means using this education and to succeed and to give back to the community. Yet, it's not really recalling the functional group of alcohols or the derivative of 16x cubed that's going to enable you to change the world. Instead, it will be all those little skills and values you picked up along the way. In the words of Albert Einstein, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. And after so many years at Green Springs, we have learned how to learn and have been taught not so much what to think, but how to think. And that is the true meaning of our education. Before I leave, I would like to share with you all something I once heard that has stuck with me ever since. The saying goes, do not be afraid of failure, but please be terrified of regrets. You should be scared out of your mind of the what ifs, because the truth is, as we go out into life, we will hear a thousand more no's than yeses. And if you listen to all those no's, then you won't make it very far. So you know what you do? When someone says you can't, you do it. You do it twice, and then you take pictures. It should be fueled to your fire. Your aspirations should blaze so brightly that no no can put it out. Dream, dream big. The sky is only your starting point. Work hard, try new things, dare to do, to be. I mean, do a global pandemic the closure of schools, and then the introduction of hybrid learning, you were still able to adapt. You made things work. Look back at all you've done. What is there that you couldn't possibly do today? Never let anything or anyone discourage you from achieving your goals. Finally, the word valedictorian derives from the Latin phrase, the Latin phrase val de ser, meaning to say farewell. And on behalf of this graduating set, I say farewell secondary school and hello to bigger and better things. Thank you, class of 2021, and congratulations. At this point in time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for the day who is joining us virtually from the United States. Dr. Ola Dapo Akolabi is a software development engineer at Microsoft Corporation, working on virtual and augmented reality technologies. Prior to joining Microsoft, Dr. Akolabi completed his PhD in electrical engineering and computer science at the, at the University of California, Berkeley and his BS in Electrical Engineering from the University of Virginia. He also completed research internship experiences at Magic Leap Corporation, Harvard University, and Virginia Commonwealth University. Green Springs has a very special place in Dapper's heart. He completed his preschool, elementary, and secondary school education at Green Springs School, Lagos spending time at both Anthony and Lecky campuses. Dapo graduated from the Lecky campus as part of the class of 2010 and held the honor of being nominated as the head boy of his set. Please give a round of applause for Dr. Dapo, Ola Dapo, Akolabi. School Lecky campus. Good morning, Executive Director, Mrs. Koiki, leadership team, teachers, members of staff, parents, and of course the wonderful students we're celebrating today. I'm honored to have been invited to participate in this occasion, and it brings me great joy to be back speaking to you all today. Many times a year, I reminisce about my time at Green Spring School, 
and how much of an impact it has had on me. Usually, it takes a while for me to get back to the present because I have a lot of wonderful memories to go through. One of my earliest life memories still with me is getting lost in the main building of the Antoni campus on the first day of school looking for Pinka Onaike. Luckily for me, a wonderful lady, another student at the time, saw me and kindly helped me find my classroom. The feeling I had that day was one of being lost. But in hindsight, I should have been excited. Excited to begin what would be a wonderful journey and one of the best decisions my parents could make for me. I spent so much of my childhood at Green Springs that the joke is that I was probably delivered by the nurse and that my blood is probably now green. I can assure you that both of those statements are not true. Fast forward to about a decade later, and I was in a very similar situation to the class of 2021 today. Just like you, I was attending my secondary school graduation ceremony from the Lekki campus. Maybe just like I was when I was starting off, some of you are a bit nervous, excited, but hopefully not lost. All those feelings are normal and to be expected. My hope is today I'm able to pass on to you Something that will make you excited about the future, but also add to the wonderful preparation you've been given so far at Green Springs. While trying to prepare for this, I thought hard about how to achieve this. What could I say to you? After all, not too long ago, I was in your shoes. What would I have wanted to hear at my own graduation ceremony? What message would be simple enough to stick? So I decided I would leave you with the word beat. Okay, great answer. Beats. What do you mean by beats, you may ask? Well, let me explain. The B in beats stands for believe. I want you to believe in yourselves. I want you to believe in the power of your dreams. I want you to believe you can achieve anything you set your mind to. I believe in you. I have every reason to. I asked your teachers and I have been told that I stand before fantastic public speakers, writers, sportsmen, musicians, and much more. All despite the pandemic. Maybe you do not feel that way right now. Maybe you think you did not quite achieve as much as you wanted to. Or maybe you have been told that you can't do this or you can't do that. I want you to forget all that and realize that you can be better at anything you set your mind to. I want you to know that where you are right now is not your destination. You are not what people tell you you are. In my experience, the way it works is that you first decide what you want to be, you go ahead and do it, and then people tell you that is what you are now. So you see, it all starts with you. Please give yourselves permission to be whatever you want to be. Remember the saying, those who think they can and those who think they can't are usually both right. However, with believing in yourself, I want you to have some humility. Humility is simply giving a fair assessment of your current state. It's good to know that at any point in your life, you will not be the strongest at everything and that you can always be wrong. Your job is to realize this and know that you're always learning. Even when you are the best at something, you can always learn from someone who knows nothing about it. Do not let a lack of humility rob you of your chance to improve yourself. So, you want to realize what your strengths are and realize what you're currently not good at. This is not so you shame yourself but instead it's to identify the effort it will take to reach your goals, then you must believe that you can work to bridge the gap. The E in beats stands for endeavor. Simply, I want you to try to achieve whatever goals you have set for yourself. Your great idea will only exist in your head unless you try it out. I have watched people be successful not just because they had some talent, 
or because they try and why don't we try sometimes i think a lot of times it's because we're afraid of failing if you ever come to this point in your life i want you to realize that failing is not a character trait it does not define you and it's not a permanent state unless you want it to be failing is one of the many stops on the road to success do not let the fear of failing prevent you from trying. Instead, be resilient when you fail. I want you to be so focused on being successful that you refuse to be distracted by failing. Use failing as an opportunity to learn how to be successful. Know why you failed and don't do it again the next time. Do not be afraid of what others will think if you fail. They usually don't remember how many times you failed after you have become successful. So make a plan and then try it out. Just try it out. The A in BEATS stands for active. I want you to be an active participant in all that you do. Do not be passive. Another word for this is ownership. What I mean is that I want you to take responsibility in whatever situation you are in. If you notice a problem, develop the habit of asking yourself if you can solve part of the problem and go ahead and do it. I find that the best people I have worked with are those that decide to take responsibility in whatever position they find themselves, even before they explicitly ask you. I want you to practice owning your role. Always ask yourself, if I were the owner in this situation, what would I do to make things better? The T in BEATS stands for teamwork. It is important to realize that no one is an island. We work best in teams. So I want you to find a team that will support you as you go through the rest of your life. As you go forward in the next chapters of your life, find teams that can help you. I also want you to try to be a team player in whatever group you find yourselves. If you think about it, if you can do something alone, you can probably do it in a team. However, if you cannot do something alone, you may be able to do it in a team. Life will come at you with many rough waves and you will need to, a team to help you navigate through the high seas. For some, this may be your family and friends, and for some others, their religious groups. Whatever works for you, try to find a great group going in the same direction as you. Finally, the S in B stands for sharing. I want you to learn to share your skills, knowledge, and talent with others to help them achieve their goals. The school's motto says, in love serve one another. And I am convinced that if we all do this, the world will be a better place. Don't be too busy to help others. Try to cover some time to do this. People tend to remember those who help them and will try to do the same to you in the future. In addition, when you're part of a team, I want you to think, how can I be of service to others? How can I bring my best self to help? Not just me. But this team succeeds. When I look back, I am so grateful for the team of parents, family, teachers, some of which I still here today, by the way, and friends that played a part of my support team. To the teachers, I am constantly amazed by the impact you have in the lives of so many. Thank you for the great work you have done with these students. To the parents, I'm sure you are so proud of your children. Thank you for the investment you have made in their lives. Class of 2021, I will leave you with this analogy. Making an entertaining music performance happens in layers. You start off with the beats, then you lay on the vocals and the dancing and the art and so on, but you start off with the beats. In the same way, I hope that some of what I've shared with you today 
Beats, as I call them, can call them as you orchestrate your skills to make the most of your life. The world is eagerly awaiting the wonderful performance you will produce, and I'm convinced you will exceed our expectations. We're also proud of you. Thank you for having me. Congratulations and God bless. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Oladako Akolabi. Today we recognize that the class of 2021 will be going into a world that has changed tremendously in just 15 months because of the coronavirus pandemic. Margaret Mead, an American cultural anthropologist, has this to say, number one. Always remember that you are absolutely unique, just like everyone else. Number two, and the more important of the two. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. In the 2007 movie, uh, Give an Almighty, I believe a number of us who have watched it, particularly those in the boarding house, that had Ivan Baxter, who wanted to change the world. Uh, in a conversation with God, acted by Morgan Freeman, Thank God, Hollywood finally realized that God is a black person. That should put some, God, God, God is a Nigerian in actual fact. How many of you agree with that? He is a Nigerian. He, is a Nigerian. he said, many people want to change the world, but only few know how. Finally, at the tail end of the movie, he suggested very strongly, or he affirmed that Baxter should build an ark and all of us should build an ark. What is an ark? Well, somebody said a boat. In this context, it is acts of random kindness. Acts of random kindness. We are all unique, so there is a unique contribution we can all make if we address our minds to the fact that we need to do good deeds. But beyond what we can do as individuals, if we come together as a collective, we can do a lot much more. Team has been redefine as together, everybody achieves more. Synergy tells us that one plus one gives us more than two. The second quote I repeat, never doubt. This is like Jesus saying, verily, verily, of most assuredly I say to you, never doubt. You can take this to the market. You can bank on this. So it's never doubt that a small group, a small group, a critical mass, there's always that number of grains of salt that will make sense. Uh, you don't need too much of it. You just need that critical mass. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed, thoughtful, thoughtful, you have been trained to be thinkers, You've not been trained on what to think, but how to think. Thinkers own the world. Thinkers shape the world. Thinkers are the world. They are not waiting for things to happen. They make things happen. Committed, 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 dedicated, citizens, ownership. You've had all those words I learned today. Can change the world. Indeed, she moves from can to indeed. It is the only thing that has ever changed the world.
So like Dr. Olada uh, uh, said, Abiodun Olada said, Dako Abiodun said, or like he did. Five things I just want to bring up with that quote by Margaret Mead. Uh, in actual fact, she did a second and third degree uh, at Columbia University. Number one, change the world requires a vision. Today, I happen to be here with our third son, who is completely green sprints. Started at uh, green class, yeah, green class in Anthony, and graduated here virtually last year. So he's savoring this atmosphere and making up for 2020 class 2020. Uh, I'm so glad he's here today. And I do pray that he himself has got a vision. I'm trying to explain what I'm saying. Our guest speaker, Dr. Dapo, graduated exactly 10 years ahead of me. Uh, graduated as the head boy of his set, allowed me graduated as head boy of his set. And both of them seem to be going in the right, in the same direction, robotics, engineering, trying to use technology to help the people uh, of Africa and the people of the world in the days to come. So I do hope that 10 years from now, we'll probably be celebrating him having done his PhD. Uh, if I do have time, I'll come back to that at the end of this. Vision, as you step out here, what do you see? If you close your eyes, what would you see? I, I want to strongly recommend that you begin to dream. And somebody had said, the valedictorian, dream big. Dream about how you can change Africa. Don't just think of Nigeria. Dream about how you can change the lot of the people of color. Dream about how you can change humanity. Uh, thinkers and dreamers own the world. Do develop a vision. Number two, self-leadership. Self-leadership. In 1985, that song, USA for Africa, of uh, We Are the World, was produced by USA for Africa, a song piece written by Michael Jackson. Uh, it won the Grammy Award for Song of the Year, it was done to raise money. That was a vision to raise money for Africa, um, co-written by Lionel Richie, produced by Quincy Jones. I'm going to talk about Quincy Jones. How was he able to lead a pack of A-rated artists, names like Stevie Wonder, Kenny Rogers, Diana Ross, Paul the Jacksons, Ray Charles, Smokey Robinson, Ari, Ari Belafonte, Tina Turner, and Steve Perry, and a lot more. How was he able to lead them? One simple reason, self-leadership. Until you can lead yourself in a visionary and exemplary manner, don't expect people to follow you. Uh, the more accomplished and successful people are, the more they need self-leaders to lead them. Everybody can lead at any point in time, but not everybody can lead at critical points in time. The pandemic that has just ended or is about to end, in actual fact, is just one of the many that will come in the days to come. I stand on scriptures, Matthew 24, Revelation 6, we're still expecting more. So the kinds of leaders that are going to come forth in the days to come are visionary and self-led people. Number three, thoughtful people people with empathy, people who can look beyond themselves and stretch out beyond themselves. People who can sit down and think, look at the environment and ask what is coming and what can we do about it. As you progress, I want to strongly encourage you learn to think. I remember as Olaru came home last year and was preparing for exams, I said to him, I said, in my heart, deep within my core, something is brooding that you shouldn't study to pass an exam, study to know, study to know. And as things panned out, they didn't have to take exams. They had to use their past assessments to grade them. But he currently wrote and finished yesterday his um, OSSD exams on higher secondary school diploma exams. And the same thoughts came up again. I said, son, 
You're not studying to pass an exam. Do beyond that. Study to know. Because whatever you know will stand you in good stead in the days to come. So I want to say to you all, you're not studying to pass an exam to have a second degree or a third degree. Study to know. Study to acquire. It will help you in your thought processes. Number four, we spoke about, she spoke about a small group. The days of individual mavericks, uh, uh, rambles are over. These are the days of collaboration, 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 collabo. Uh, these are the days where people that will make giant strides are people who are collaborating across disciplines, across the spectrum of races, uh, the entire gender, male, female, everybody working together will make greater things happen. And lastly, she spoke about committed, committed. Stay with it till the very end. Don't give up. Uh, I believe it's Robert Schuller that says, quitters never win. And winners never quit. In rounding up, I do not know when I will have another opportunity to ever stand on this kind of platform. So I want to use this opportunity to thank Mrs. Lai and also thank the entire Green Springs family. Let's appreciate that. I, I, and I will just quickly share very, very sharp and fast three testimonies. Our first son ended up studying architecture. And I said, where did you get that from? He always said, well, I did a bit of TD. Uh, but beyond that, we were not thinking of a second school, uh, sorry, tertiary education until about July. And that's pretty late for what I know now. But the seven days, which turned out to be a big testimony and miracle, was that at the desk, the reception desk, I saw a flyer, a three-page flyer, and I picked it up. Um, and it says, we can get you three schools in America, and we can even get you a scholarship. All you need to do is pay 20% of whatever um, whatever scholarship you have to, to get you. So I said, well, this looks good. So we applied, and they said, what are your requirements? Well, number one, we are looking for a school where you can do architecture for five years with a good soccer program. They gave us three schools. We finally chose jury. And the good thing is that we ended up becoming a student coach on his soccer team uh, and he's earning part technically yeah, small money in the US as a soccer coach. He ended up working, he's working with a big architectural firm and they're all surprised that how were you able to achieve a master's of architecture in five years? It's look, I mean, he was the youngest in his class. And in his office is probably the youngest as well. Thank you to Green Springs for giving us that opportunity. Our second son, Kolebe, is currently finishing his master's on scholarship, uh, Madison, and he's been also offered a PhD program by his professor, also on scholarship. He came home one day and said, Dad, I would like to be a farmer. And I said, come, farmer, what, what do you mean? He said, in our school, which is Green Springs, they taught us, told us that famine is coming to Africa, and I want to be part of the people that will solve that problem. When he said that to me, I said to myself, all the money that I have and that which I don't have, <laughs> we have to borrow, uh, we'll put this guy through school. He ended up graduating from Lord, uh, Iowa State University, at Germany, and he's going to start his PhD in agronomy as well. What do you think to do? He said to me, I would like to be a missionary helping poor people in third world nations to improve their world. Thank you, Green Springs, for the invitation. Now, Olawu is the thoroughbred Green Springs. He came in here, um, how many years now? 16 years ago, and uh, he left here last year. He probably will have done his ID because he already had some scholarship to do ID here. But for the first time ever, uh, a Canadian school in Nigeria offered scholarship. And Olaulu was able to win that scholarship. And that's why he went to that Canadian school. Thank you, Green Springs, for allowing uh, me save $15,000 for him to go to that school. Interestingly, he ended up being chosen 
as the president of the student council in that school as well. Thank you, Grace James. Um, also, they participated in the Conrad Challenge and they came, um, I think they, they were second runner up with his team. That gave him a $15,000 scholarship to a school I didn't know about, Clarkson University in Potsdam, New York. Okay, so we decided to apply there and see how that will pan out. As of today, Olalu has been granted full tuition worth $220,000 in that school, and we will resume in fall. Thank you so much, Grace Banks. We also got into the Honors College that also gave him additional $8,000 scholarship over four years. Thank you, Grace Banks. We are in class of 2021. There are opportunities everywhere. Shine your eyes, be the best, and trust God. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for that inspirational um, talk. And thank you for the information that you have given us. I'm sure the students and their parents are going to start investigating immediately after this program. We'd like to uh, give you a token of our appreciation. And I'd like to call our outgoing social prefect, Jessica Wilmany. Can we put our hands together for her, please? Um, on behalf of the class of 2021, we want to say thank you very much for your impactful words of wisdom. May God continue to bless you and your family. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Jessica. 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 Thank
His role model is his mother because she is perfect. And she's a perfect example of what he would like to become in life. Olua Lai would like, would like to study macroeconomics and become the CEO of a non-profit organization. Olua Kibati Akonde. Kibati is a Chelsea fan who enjoys playing football and watching series on TV. He plays four instruments and was on the school swimming team. Kibati plans to study architecture and to fight corruption in Nigeria. Anwalua <laughs> Akimbogu. Anwalua loves acting and has participated in the end of year shows on multiple occasions. She is a Manchester United fan and enjoys playing football, basketball, swimming, acting, watching TV, and singing. Her role model is Ben Carson, and she would like to study medicine, not just so she can help people regain their health, but more especially so she can put smiles on the faces of people when she saves their lives. She would like to be an actress because she loves acting. Temidayo Akinlade. Temidayo likes playing football, swimming, writing stories, watching movies, reading, and making music beats. His favorite all time music is, uh, movie is Hacksaw Ridge, a true story about a pacifist. Temidayo would like to become either a videographer, a producer, or an actor because he enjoys making movies, writing stories, and scripts for movies and acting. His role model is his dad because he never gives up no matter how hard the task is and he always gives it it's his best. Aliyah Akiola. Aliyah was co-captain of the Boone Spring School football team, a high-ranking member of the girls basketball team, an esteemed tennis player, and silver medal holder of the annual year nine girls relay race, a committee member of the first ever virtual girls up and acted in two of the end of year shows. Um, and she was the president of the Young Entrepreneurs Club as well. She is a Tottenham Hotspur supporter. Joshua Akorumo. Joshua is a very simple and straightforward young man. He likes money and wants to venture into the financial sector and become a CEO. Joshua lives by the philosophy that you should do what you want because life is short. Elvis Akoto. Okay, we move on. Moshope Kolua Alawaya. Moshope enjoys playing basketball, drawing, and coding. He wants to study engineering and become an aerospace engineer. Moshope Olua's role model is Elon Musk because he is a wealthy, successful, and influential entrepreneur in his, own, in the, his chosen field of study. Let's give him a round of applause. Popola Aluko. Popola enjoys economics and would like to become an investment banker. He enjoys playing a variety of sports, but especially polo. He believes that control is an illusion and some situations demand graceful acceptance of fate rather than futile attempts to, at controlling what is beyond our influence. Popola's role model is Nelson Mandela because he was patient and full of hope rather than hate. He was humble, determined, and focused on a vision bigger than himself. Danielson Amaku. Danielson lives by the very simple philosophy, do what you love and love what you do. He aspires to become a professional footballer and entrepreneur. 
and to transform, transform football academies in Nigeria into some of the best in the world. Daniel Sun is an Arsenal fan, but when he's not watching or playing football, he enjoys watching videos, listening to music and playing games. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with immense pleasure that I ask you to join me in welcoming the fantastic class of 2021 for their graduation graduation ceremony. scholarships for their entire secondary education would like to show their appreciation to the executive director, Mrs. Koiti, and to Alhaja Koledoye, who has been their guardian and mentor these five years. Please join me as I welcome onto the stage Olua Tobi Ogulee and Jibril Aziz. Please put your hands together for them. May I also invite Mrs. Koiki and Alaja Kolegoyo, please, to come onto the stage. Good afternoon, Ms. Koiki, Dr. Banu, Ms. Odugo, all the members. Teachers, 
friends and my fellow brothers. My name is Aziz Tibu. And it's great to know that I'm standing here with my friend, Pedro Ulea, after four years in this school. It does not say a big thank you to Ms. Lightweighty for giving us this opportunity. We cannot thank you enough now for this quality education and giving to us. May God continue to bless you with you now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Alada for the because she took us as our children and she cared for us. May God Almighty reward you, man. We are here to present to you this class that we took in our position. We need to do it to this effective promise. But you know, we cannot be watching fully dead. Thank you for your time. I would like to say a very big thank you to Mr. Ashley Akimu for believing in us, for supporting us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mrs. Scotty and Lady. At this okay, point in time, I would like to invite our outgoing head boy and head girl, Chukwe Mecca and Osilama, to join us to come onto the stage for the vote of thanks. Please give them a round of applause. Don't be tired. We're nearly there. Wow. Hannah and Tanama have said that nobody is perfect. I should take taken a look at all of you sitting here today. Do you guys know how beautifully dressed you're looking right now? Five years, all the preparation for one day. And here we are. We have been waiting five years to one year, to six weeks, to one week, and finally today. The canopy sets beautifully and the chair spaced evenly, all thanks to the support staff. These long, rigorous years of waiting would have been absolutely draining if it had not been for the nutritious meals served by the kitchen staff. I obviously have sole purpose education. What type of education? Education that promotes lifelong learning. In an open and caring atmosphere that most visitors become responsible global citizens. This would have been unattainable without the support team. And believe me, we had a formidable support team. From the support staff to the teachers, our year level head, Ms. Ajudwa, our the admin staff, the assistant principal, our secondary school principal, Mrs. Shaya Aldo the head of school, Mr. Jugo, and the deputy director of education, Dr. Barney Wilson. Of course, our visionary, Mrs. Lai who saw today, many years ago, and decided to put the first desk in front of the first shower. My God bless you, our GP. To our parents, who have gone far and wide just to make this day achievable and believable, we want to promise you that your efforts in our life would definitely not be in vain. To God, the omnipotent, the general overseer, the alpha and omega, to him alone be all glory and praise. Finally, to my fellow graduating students, we would like to leave you with a quote by Drake. Avant de s'abonner, Pense à la raison pour laquelle vous avez pensé si longtemps. Thank you and God bless you.